Listen to that explosion of noise and cries from the Coxes as we go away in the Prince Philip Challenge Trophy. Headington School on the left and Greenwich Crew, Greenwich Crew from the US of A on the right. Nice clean start at the moment. Nothing for John Hedge, the umpire, to do at this point, and that's what I'm sure he's hoping it'll stay. You can see from the, the flags on the left of the course here that uh, it's really got a lot calmer. A few stripes of wind across. It might be a little bit of crosswind, a little bit of topple, but it's really amazing racing conditions for this semi-final, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. We've seen Headington sort of jump out. We know they've got a very quick start in this boat, and they've just taken that be half a length advantage out of the island, and that is for an eight to make that sort of distance in a short space of time in the semi-finals. An impressive start from the Headington girls. Yeah, they are really, really strong crew, aren't they? They are, um, I think, probably the favourites here, we have to say, but um, it now, well, it's time to answer that question if you're in the Greenwich crew. You've really got to keep going to hang on at this stage. Yeah, you do. And again, we always come back to this, you know, the role of the cocks in these in these big boats. And it's and it's about keeping that you know, such an early part of the race. It's still being motivating. It's still being encouraging. It's still being positive, even when the sense from you know, the athletes and the Greenwich crew will feel heading to the sl starting to slip away. So it's really about how you can stop the movement of the, of the opposition moving away and actually start to pull back a little bit. So Headington had an amazing season, winning the National Schools Regatta in particular, and also the school's head of the river. They're trying to make it the triple. On the men's side, we've had the triple for some years, the school's head, the national schools, and Henley, and now it's fantastic to see that the women are trying to do the same thing, and if Headington do that, that's a great testament to their system, isn't it? Greenwich, though, hanging on and attacking, huh? Well, this is exactly what you want to see. You want, you know, they've stopped that movement away. They've sort of slowed Heddington's progress. And now the main job is, can you just put in enough to start feeling that m movement back on, on Heddington? And actually, as an athlete, you, you feel that. Once you feel the other crew coming back towards you, the kind of adrenaline lifts and the confidence grows, and suddenly you think, actually, the race is back on. And you know there's some experience in class in this Greenwich crew. Francis McKenzie and Cox seat. And at six, Phoebe Wise were in the... Um, uh, US Junior Women's 8 at the Junior World Championship. So they've had some real experience of top class racing. And those are two critical seats, aren't they? The cock seat, which is calling and motivating and coaching the crew. But in the six seat, that is the rhythm section. That's where you have to combine power and rhythm and set the whole boat up to race well. Yeah, I think the six seat is always a crucial bit. You've got the stern pair sort of sitting up that, that pace and that pattern and that rhythm. And the six seat sort of transfers it back to the rest of the crew and it really is one of the big powerful seats. So really helpful for them to have confidence in, in those people in those key seats, as you say. Every seat's clearly important, but there's some that have really, the, the experience matters. Well, Kath, we've got a race on our hands. I thought that the Greenwich crew were in danger of being dropped in the first two or 300 metres, but they responded well, and now they are getting back on terms with Headington. In fact, for my money, the last kind of 100 metres or so, they've actually had the faster boat speed. I know, and that's one thing, you know, looking at that, it does feel like they're either very similar speeds or, if anything, Greenwich slightly faster of movement because they have... They have certainly halted the progress of Headington and if anything have moved back on them. And and again for the, the chasing crew, the confidence grows and the and the sort of belief that this can happen for the crew being chased, it's about still staying calm, not overreacting, trusting the Cox's instructions. The critical middle part of the race coming past our camera just before the half halfway mark we can see. Well, they are woman for woman, seat for seat. Looks like Headington have maybe got one or two seats. That means that Greenwich have recovered um, a good quarter to half a length in the last 300 metres. And if you're sitting in the Headington crew, you've got to try to be confident that you're ahead, but you've seen somebody who you thought was maybe going out of the back door coming back at you. How does that feel and how do you deal with it? Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking, I'm looking at these pictures going, what beautiful, it's like diamonds sparkling on the cup surface of this water and the sunlight, it's absolutely gorgeous. But for those two crews, they're not admiring the water right now. They are in it. You know, it's the semi-final, we're saying this, is a knockout competition, only one crew can go through. And we've got a real race on our hands because they both are really desperate to make it to the final and take on the, the, the hope of the actual title. So Frances McKenzie with that Junior World Championship experience in the Cox's seat looks across her left shoulder at Sophie Wrightson in the Cox's seat of Headington. And it is stroke for stroke. At this point, if it's sitting in these boats, you're just thinking, I need to gain a centimetre, two centimetres per stroke, one at a time, one at a time. Absolutely nothing in it. 
I know, and this is the fabulous bit as an athlete. You, you see those crowds that we're seeing now and you hear them. You can feel it reverberate through the crew. I mean, that is pretty much level coming to this, line, this last bit of the course. You've got the deafening noise of the crowds and you know that it, you know, it's going to take everything. But there's still a, a few hundred metres left. They've still got to have that energy and that composure and, crucially, the relaxation that will keep that rhythm all the way through. It's the semi-final, there is absolutely nothing in it. Greenwich suffered at the start, but they have been the faster crew through the second quarter of the race into the critical third quarter. Here go Greenwich, here go the women from Greenwich USA attacking like their lives depend on it at this point. I know, and this is that you know, you're getting tired now. The wind's coming up, the blades will be moving around. It's about composure, it's about, like I said, this relaxation. Can you stay together? Can you really tune in mentally to those Cox's instructions? Because you're going to start, everything's going to get a bit fuzzy around now, and yet, you know, this is the crucial part of the race. This is where every crew will get tested. Here's Headington sitting through that boat, really pushing hard now, trying to stay calm, trying to keep doing what they've been taught to do as they start to tire. Greenwich is moving again, Kath. I think Greenwich are maybe stealing a seat or two from Headington now absolutely kitchen sink time for both crews this is the decisive moment in the race I know in this bit when you want to get the angles just right on the camera shot so it does it like Greenwich has gone through you're right it's the first time they've led this race and what a time to do it in front of these enclosures in front of these crowds at the end of the day it doesn't matter whether you lead at any point it's only one point that counts and that's that finish line and we are about four 300 meters 350 meters away from the finish line looking at the backs of the Headington crew it's now or never for them can they book that that spot in the final can they respond and let's not forget they will be at maximal now their legs will be screaming their lungs will be burning and yet they need to find more level they'll be being shouted up i'm sure by their coxes about taking up yet another gear so for headington they've been rolled through can they have enough to roll back is it that greenwich has only got a limited amount and they can be still taken down in this last stage i think where both crews look like they're tiring a little bit maybe there's a little bit more wind here slightly struggling more in the conditions because being this close all the way down what is probably 1900 meters now it's really really tough the question are being asked and all you have to do now is just go into your boat back up the woman in front of you trust the process and focus the noise is rising hard to hear the cops this is incredible from these young women these are this is exactly the standard of rowing here is exceptional and it's going to be so tight right to the line and it's almost those awful races that you don't want anyone to lose well there's 10 strokes for heading to, to respond greenwich have been moving faster but headington have everything to play for they've got to go for it now greenwich looking stronger with 10 strokes to the line yeah i think Headington's going to run out of space now i think greenwich has timed that almost to perfection here we go Greenwich, USA, looking to make it through to Henley Finals. Cross the line first, half a length over Headington School. Relentless, relentless attacking rowing here at Henley. Oh, heartbreaking for Headington, really is. What an impressive race from them, though. But fair play to Greenwich crew. That is, that is how to race the Henley course. Wow, what a race, Kath. Oh, and I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. I can't imagine how they're feeling. But, I mean, these are the races, obviously, from Headington. You, you just don't want to be in that losing crew. You have given everything. But I hope at some point when the adrenaline's flown and the sort of the next day dawns that you can look back and be really proud of that race because that is what we want to see from brilliant young women out there is showing just the standard they can produce.